Welcome to the PHNX Coyotes post-game show brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Leah Merrill here with Steve Peters on a rare event, the 12th winning post-game show of the Coyote season. That was the 12th win? Yep. I'm glad somebody's counting. No, it was a good win. It was a good win. I think there were there are elements of today's game that they didn't apply to last night's game that helped them win today. And number one, you got to go with Corral Vamelka, and and it's it's kind of the, the the you know what we say over and over again: the goalie's good, they have a chance to win. And Vamelka was really good tonight. Uh, the difference between last night and tonight is Grubauer wasn't as good as Thatcher Demko. And I think that was that helped the Coyotes. I, I thought they had better offensive chances last night than they did tonight. Um, but fortunately, they they were able to um, put some behind Grubauer and and hold on. And I thought there for a minute in the third, it looked a little scary. But um, <clears throat> it's a big win, and I don't know. We got to we might have to make a call into somebody and remind them that this is a rebuild reminder. I know. Well, here's our. Um, I know. I just super thought chat. Come from Mr. Stalin, Coyote showed Climate Pledge Arena what global warming really is. Joe franchise, Vegas went to the finals in their first year. What a disaster. Well, what a disaster. <laughs> aggressive. Looks like a beautiful yeah, well, building. Vegas lost like six nothing to Calgary tonight. So not a great <laughs> night for the expansion teams. Um, but yeah, it did look like a beautiful building. We'll have to ask Craig, who had the chance to tour it, and then unfortunately the original game got canceled so we'll have to ask him um what he thought of the actual arena but yeah the Coyotes you know are now have, <coughs> have are now two and oh against an entire franchise i know for, for their the history of their their that's kind of fun they've never lost to that franchise they've never wow. lost to the seattle kraken wow i thought there were moments here that that, that early some of the saves that melka made tonight were absolutely impressive the save on eberly where he goes um cross ice and he gets a blocker on it that was phenomenal he had the wraparound on wenberg um he was the difference in the game tonight and it's funny when we talk about Vimelka, when he's out of the net sliding around, you go, Oh shit, we're in trouble. And then when you get a game like tonight, he was tight. He was in the crease. He dialed in everything. He swallowed up. There were no rebounds. I thought he was fantastic tonight. Now the big question is, can he do that again? He's got to start to show, can he put two or three of those games in a row? Because he was the difference today. He played great. Absolutely. Which was good to see because hearing that he was doing a back to back, was kind of concerning. So for him, and I'm sure he wanted the opportunity to after last night. So the fact that he had a great game tonight, like he did, I'm sure would meant a lot to him. Yeah, I think um, when you, when you have a game like that, Leah, you're right. Like he, he's I, five goals and 29 shots last night in Vancouver. And you, you go good grief. You put him in a back to back last time. He did back to back. He got pulled after two shots. So you get concerned. Um, but for him, he was able to race last night, put the five goals behind him, and, and he was an absolutely different guy tonight. I, I, I thought he was steady, strong, and he watched the puck all the way in. I, I thought he looked great. Definitely the difference today, and luckily for him, he was able to erase last night's game against Vancouver. Definitely. Well, let's um, kick this off with tonight by the numbers. Let's see it. All right. Um Coyotes at five, Seattle two, 27 shots for the Coyotes for to the, Seattle's 36. So again, getting out shot, but what else is new? Um, both teams 0 for 2 on the power play face offs, pretty even all around. But again, for Veggie to face 36 shots and save 34 of them. Awesome. Yeah, awesome, I wonder awesome. we, maybe for next year, we got to look at the games where he has more than 30 saves. Versus, like last night, there were only 29 shots on goal. Maybe he just needs more work. Maybe he needs 35, 40 shots a game to to have a I know. He seems to thrive when he gets, like, absolutely shot on extremely. That is not a sentence. It's, <laughs> it's okay, Leah. I was at the open we'll all day. I know. Fine. Work, 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 hey, Leah. Got oh, all that Lord. sun today. Oh, man. Better yeah. have a tan. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't get it. I still don't get it. I said it. I saw the highlights of, of the open today on TV, and I'm just the entire time I said, "Glad I'm not there." 
<laughs> but anyway, back, back to the goalie thing. I feel like there is something to, and, and this was the thing that we used to talk about where that Darcy Kemper might have might struggle with in Colorado because in Arizona, it's like as the Arizona goalie, you face a lot of shots and then going somewhere like Colorado where that team is more gifted than. Yeah. And it's hard. It's hard when you get the, you know, even you go back to when Kemper had his best games as a coyote, they were the games where he's making 30, 35 plus saves. And that's when you're in the game and you get in the rhythm and you see in the puck a lot and you, 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 you knew that was going to happen for him in Colorado. You were worried some nights he was going to get 18, 19 shots on goal, and could he stay in it? And luckily for them, um, Darcy Kemper has been lights out, and he's been able to make the saves he's supposed to make. I think with Vimelka, you see these nights, like tonight, like that's a lot of rubber he sees tonight. And I think on some of those nights when he's in the zone, it doesn't matter how many they have. They could have had 60 shots tonight. When he's feeling it, yeah. It's just got to be something for him. He's going to have to find that consistency so he can do that three out of four, four out of five, or most nights that he can play that way. Um, But even offensively, I thought they were better tonight. You know, you get get the Kessel goal, you get on a turnover, you get the one-on-one with Kessel right in front. And even in that, you know, you you had so many chances in tighter on the net. Kessel misses one in tight on a great pass by LeBush. And Fisher all alone in front of the net on the power play. Um, So they did have their opportunities. The difference is today they were able to put it by the goaltender where they couldn't get that done last night. Definitely. And you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but Grubauer didn't have as good of a game tonight as Demko did last night. And that was actually one of your keys to tonight's game it had to do with getting shots on Grubauer. So let's pull those up. Get to Grubauer was the first one. Wow. Look at you. Pucks and people at the net. Need power play success. Over lost eight. Still didn't have success on the power yeah. play. Yeah, and it, you know, it, it, they were able to put 60 minutes together, I think, tonight better than they have um, in the last few weeks. So I think they accomplished that one and they checked that box. The power play is definitely a concern. I mean, they, now they're 0 for 10. Um, and, and I don't know, other than the shot that or the pass that went through Fisher's um, by Fisher's stick, they didn't have a lot of great looks on the power play. And that's two consecutive games on this back to back where you didn't go, oh, wow, they were all over them on the power play. There was. On, on the second power play night, they had a little better puck movement. But again, it wasn't The a second lot of, one was definitely better. It was better, but, but they're not getting the shots and the opportunities where you go, oh, the goalie made great saves or or those kind of things. And that you've got to start finding those things on the power play to help build your momentum. More importantly, you need the goals. But if you can't get the goals, you need to build the momentum. And I just don't see it on their power play right now. And, you know, you, you've got a, a team with Tampa coming in this weekend. But good grief, that's a team that, you are going to have to find a way to score. It's the one of the premier teams in these back-to-back cup winners. They, if not the best goalie in the world, one of the top goalies in the world, you are going to have to try to score when you have the man advantage. So hopefully that streak ends for them on Friday um, because tonight I just didn't see the magic there on the power play. I, I hope they get to, when, when I look back at some of our, but Newell Brown was a coach we had here that ran the power play years ago when this team was in the top 10 in the power play. And he would always say, when we get in trouble, the puck goes to the defenseman and you shoot. And everybody knows there's going to be a shot and everybody goes to the net. So when you're struggling on it, just make it easy. Don't try to make plays. Don't try to, to make the perfect pass. Just make it easy. Everybody knows the puck's going to the net. Let's go to the net. And then when you start getting those goals and maybe a few of those go in, then you can start relaxing on the power play. And then you can start looking for your plays and running different options off of the power play. But right now they're just going to have to find a way to get a goal. And off, like an old Garland off the face goal. They need something to happen <laughs> on the power play. True. Well, it might be one of those <clears throat> things that it just needs to happen once and kind of get it going much like Phil Kessel tonight, who finally scored um, after an 18 game goal drought, which for someone who's a goal scorer, like Phil Kessel, that's significant. It was his sixth goal of the season, and I thought Phil Kessel looked really good tonight. Yeah, and you know he got to the net, and and you you know he's a guy that's going to score, and the trade deadline's coming, and he's thinking about it. He just needs those opportunities. They're going to go in for him eventually, and I thought he looked good. He skated well. I thought he had another chance in the second period that we talked about that just he just missed. Um, Schmaltz gets a goal again, so I I think it's when we see the, the guys that are supposed to score, score. I wish Keller would have been able to get on the uh, yeah. goal. Uh, well, he too. had an, I think he had an assist on one of the empty net goals on the last he one. He did. Yeah. He did get one on, on Schmaltz's last goal. So he's back on the score sheet and starts another streak today. 
Um, but offensively, again, we, I still think they looked better last night. The difference, the other difference tonight, though, as you're watching it, you go, oh, the, the third period, they're up by two. Oh, this is good. They, they look good. They're, they're still looking for offense. Things were going good. And then they give up another odd man rush goal. And you go, oh, shit. It's I was, three to two. I was sweating. There's a lot of time. There's a yeah. lot of time. I, out hard. loud, I said, please don't do this. Like, out loud, I said that. <laughs> Because I just and felt like it was they, they can't because they even though the shots were lopsided and the goaltending had been good, I thought that they deserved this win. And I I, I said, oh, they just gotta hang on. And by hanging on, I mean they gotta keep trying to generate offense. And I tell you what, after that goal, I go, uh oh. And then sure enough, a few seconds later, they 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 score. And and I think that was the difference. They just kept it going. And instead of sitting back on their heels and I don't want to say giving up, but instead of sitting back on their heel and letting Seattle come at them, they kept their feet moving and they were able to get out of this one. And, you know, a couple empty netters after that. Um, and they walk away with a 5-2 win. <laughs> the, the comments are great. And this comment kind of brings to light what I'm going through right now, trying to pay attention. But the chat, the chat is, is on, on fire. fire. It is. It really is. Um, and this is a funny comment from Tim. We're Coyotes fans. We've all said, please don't do this to me at the TV before a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, but I do just want to <laughs> scroll back up um, because AJ from DNVR Avalanche is here in oh, our comments AJ. with some stats. Um, the Melka, one in seven when facing less than 30 shots on goals. Six, 12, and one when facing 30 plus shots on goals. Two no decisions. Only two games with over a point nine. Save percentage when facing less than 30 Look shots at AJ. on goal. Thanks, AJ. See, and that's what those guys do at DNVR. Those two guys, they know everything about everything. <laughs> like You should see the stats these guys come up with. I was watching their show today. It's just amazing. Oh, I wish I could be like that. They got, like, they're hockey rain men. I just love that in me. I appreciate it so much. Well, But he's just, right, and that just proves the point of what we're talking about. Under 30 is one in seven. Like, yep. He needs to get shot, so... If, Buddy, get him in there against Tampa because they're they're gonna have no problem getting to thirty on Friday night. Yeah, seriously. So maybe he'll have another incredible performance against a top team in the NHL. But for tonight, he was our DraftKings king of the game. Okay. Um, this was he was kind of king of the game all night for us. Um, Thirty four saves, point nine four four save percentage. Um, we've kind of already said it but just a bounce back from last night and hopefully he carries that momentum into friday because they're gonna need it they're gonna need all the help and goal they get against some of the best uh offense in the whole nhl so. yeah you talk about you know the workload and you get worried about his workload okay so th th it's gonna be a tough night tonight this is you know we talk about it's, it's 11 o'clock here right now they're not even at the plane yet so they're they're not getting home till really late tonight so it's what two three get to bed in your own bed by four in the morning tonight but, but maybe later so <clears throat> tomorrow's a day off there won't nobody will be at the rink tomorrow injured guys will may, maybe have to go in but hopefully they find a way to come up with some energy for friday and then the good news is their second long break of this all-star olympic break comes immediately after the game friday and they got seven days without a game so let's get everybody through friday let's leave it all on the ice Friday, let Vamelka make his 40 saves. And then you've got seven days to rest up and get ready for the, for the stretch run here. So it should be, I want to say an interesting game. I, I, ho I hope, I hope they can stay competitive. I, I've seen these Tampa Bay games get out of hand, but Tampa Bay, you know, one of the things AJ's got Tampa Bay comes in the night before into Denver um, and they're on a back to back. So it's going to be a late night for Tampa and maybe, you know, that's a big game. You look on the schedule, like Tampa Bay, Colorado, and then you think the next night it's Tampa Bay, Arizona. Maybe they'll look past it. Maybe maybe they're not ready. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I'm sorry. The comments are always just so funny. If people want Sean to read the comments out loud, I guess people enjoyed that last night. Um, everyone's going on about socks and your shins still. Yeah, but I, I'll just say this. I'm going to stay seated. So it's just, you'll use your imagination. We'll see. All right. I um, will be more prepared. We have a show tomorrow and we'll be on a studio Friday. 
I will try to get longer socks. Oh my everybody gosh. freaking happy. Um, PD, there is a question in the chat from Bees. Yes. Were you pleased with the puck pressure tonight, excluding the third period, of course? Yeah, even the third, though, I, I thought, you know, even the rush goal they gave they gave up, it, it was on a good four check. I mean, F1 was hard on the puck. F2 and 3 were there. It was just a bad defensive breed by Chikrin. Um, I thought it was better. I thought that they felt like they had some offensive zone time that they haven't had consistently for 60 minutes of late. So yeah, I, I think it was, it was much better than we've seen for an extended period of time. Definitely. Well, what did you think of um, Nick Schmaltz tonight? He had that goal in the second period. That was also his sixth of the season. And then he had the empty net goal. How did you judge his performance? Overall you know what? It, it's funny. He, he, we've talked about his skill level and his ability to, to, to do things offensively and it's just that we haven't seen it enough and I thought this is a perfect characterization of that like you saw it was a great goal it's a great shot he got away from the defenseman albeit he was the last guy back in the zone on the back check so that allowed him to be the first guy on the four check you'd like to see him back in the play a little bit more but he was able to get away from the defenseman unbelievable shot bar in big goal you just want to see him do that more consistently the empty net goal it's nice to to get uh, on the score sheet again. And it's a goal they needed to, to put this one away. Um, there were points in the game that he looked better. I think we're still looking for that consistency. And the, going back with Boyd in the middle of the ice, they had Galchenyuk the last two games, um, gave him a little bit of a spark. They switched that up, put Boyd back there. And I thought that was a good move. I thought that Boyd brought a different element to that line. And I thought that line looked good again tonight, where I don't know if they had that same spark last night. And Galchenyuk clearly brought that that energy to to the Kessel um, to, to the second line with Kessel and Kraus because that line looked better too. Uh oh, is Leah gone? Sean, is it just me? Well, I don't know if we're still here. Oops. Well, I guess I'm still here, so I can talk about it. Am I, Tim? Is it me? Am I still here? Oh, there's Leah. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> Both of you guys bailed on me. I don't know what happened. AJ, even AJ said P found solo. A little panic button there, and just like last time when we got kicked off, and it was we were, we were all gone. We I was still here by myself. You. I'm just kidding. You didn't get kicked off. <clears throat> no, I Sean and I did. So you're so you had nothing to do with that. Literally nothing. I carry you it. didn't. You didn't kick my back us sore. Petey Sean, kicked us hell? off, buddy. <laughs> you did, <laughs> buddy. Let's go. It's freaking showtime here. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, I, I'm I blaming you. Kicked out. We were texting each other like, "Oh, uh, what's happening?" No, I was here. I, I just, was, I just wasn't sure if I was gone, so I kept looking. I was, I was, I've actually asked Tim to say, Hey, am I still here, Tim? Because I saw the comments. So then they started PD Fine solo. So I knew I was still there. Oh my gosh. That was. Well, I, I don't know what else there is to say about this game. The goaltending was liked out. <laughs> Offensively, they, they got better opportunities than they did last game. I think they're in the, they're in big trouble Friday night against Tampa, except Tampa might, might uh, run out of gas in Colorado the night before. Um, I wish for the fans they could play the Kraken more often. I mean, this is it's too bad they know, can't get right? them on the schedule once a week. Um, because if this you is play a, them one more time, I think it's a team that you, you looked at the beginning of the season and you knew they weren't going to be what the Vegas Golden Knights were in, in their inaugural season, and clearly that's coming to pass. This is a team that's coming back down um, to the tank. Watch, they're getting close. I mean, they're within they're within striking distance of well, these pesky Coyotes. I think, I think we have the standings, right, Sean? Yes, we do. All right, let's let's see them because this is the updated standings, flipped upside down. Of course, Montreal in last and making no efforts to be not in last. Um, fired. But, but their, does that change, Leah? Today. I think does it will. That... I think it's going to have the same effect that Bruce Boudreau did on the Vancouver Canucks, um, and I think they're going to have a a little boost here. So that could benefit the Coyotes. Um, but if, even though the Coyotes beat Seattle tonight, I still think there's enough of that six-point separation between the two. I don't think Seattle is going to catch Arizona in the – catch them in the reverse way that you would. I mean, six points is a, is a lot, but there's still a lot of hockey left. 
I mean, there's 35 games left. That you get concerned. Um, the one thing that we keep talking about, the trade deadline is going to affect these teams differently. I don't think, I don't believe, and AJ's in the chat so he would know, but I don't think <laughs> Seattle's going to be as active as the Arizona Coyotes are at the trade deadline. I think Arizona is going to be a team that's, going to be moving a lot of pieces and i don't know if that's going to be the same for seattle um montreal is going to try but i think with montreal we talked about adding um hall of famer martin st louis <laughs> as their head coach I, I i agree i think it's the boost boudreau effect i think there's going to be a bump i think they're going to see you know do i expect them to go eight in a row no of course not i don't want to anticipate them knocking off eight straight wins but i do see them getting more wins and playing a little different style and playing more for their coach than we've seen in the last little bit. And Craig brought it up in the last show. It's hard to play for Dominic Ducharme when you know he's going to be gone. Um, so I think that change is going to help them, and it might tighten up this race because right now the Coyotes are putting the, the Montreal Canadiens in their rear view mirror. Um, Craig calls. <laughs> Craig's Craig call. calls. Let's see if he can stay on air here. It's Craig. I, Craig, I, I, you I, missed it. We had um, a situation where Sean and I – got booted from the broadcast but not pd <laughs> not pd had to carry the show i was running solo for a little bit but... <laughs> how long did that last uh, i don't know 30 seconds but it's 30 seconds too long i tell you that so how, did you bring an alternate pd just to have a conversation you know, i should have i yeah. should have i was thinking about changing the content completely of the show <laughs> just off just the rails it was oh, gonna go off the man. rails well who did you get tonight craig uh we talked to alex galchenyuk nick schmaltz and andre so what did you think? Wait, Leah just asked me about Nick Schmaltz's game tonight. What did you think of, of Nick Schmaltz for 60 minutes tonight? Uh, I mean, I, had, I thought he had his moments. I, did, I didn't think it was uh, uh, the type of game where, oh, wow, he had two goals. I thought he was an outstanding player tonight. I, th I thought he had his moments tonight. Wow. That's what about, the way what about Jacob Chikrin? Wow, are we just going to go through every player? No, right now? just I feel like two. I'm under. I'm under the uh, <laughs> not under the gun to you. Here. This is for you and PD. I was just was. It came to mind also because he had that really great chance. He basically saved a goal yeah. and then yeah. drew a and then not drew took a penalty like a minute later. So just kind of all over the map for him. So I'm just curious what your guys' yeah, well, overall evaluation of him. Overall, is. lately, I think he's more engaged in the in the game than he, he was earlier in the season. He looks like he's playing with a little more confidence. I don't know what what's driving that. Maybe he's just gotten past the rough start and the adjustment to his new role, uh, his new coach, etc. But he does look more comfortable. He's still not producing uh on the offensive level that we're used to seeing with Jacob Chikrin and and uh, you know I don't know if the pressure is getting to him as well um he hasn't been very open with media I will say recently uh, it's been a little surprising because he's always been a pretty easy guy to talk to but he hasn't wanted to talk much recently and has has actually bristled a little bit when we've brought up the questions about the trade deadline etc so it may be getting to him a little bit um but uh, like I said I think he's been a little better player of late yeah, and one of the things tonight, Craig, and one of the things I still question his ability to defend from the red line in, and I think you look at the, the Seattle second goal tonight, he gets caught pinching a little bit on the blue line, and he just couldn't quite get back into the play and defend it as probably as well as he would have liked. But when we talk about Jacob Chick, when we talk about him on the offensive side of the puck, and for me tonight, he had 10 attempts at net, five shots on net. That tells me he's trying to shoot when he has the puck. And I thought early in the year, the first 15, 20 games, he's trying to distribute it more, make the better pass, trying to help his teammates more. He's got to be selfish. When the puck comes to him, he has to shoot. So having 10 shot attempts for him, I think that shows that he's trying to get the confidence offensively. And I keep saying it's going to come, and I really believe it's going to come from offensively. He had a breakaway tonight. He just couldn't get a handle on it right in tight. Um, I think it's going to come. I don't, I still said it. I said it last show and I'll still say it. I don't know if there's a good GM that's willing to pay the price that Bill Armstrong's asking at the trade deadline right now. I just don't know if there is the other good news tonight. He was plus two. We got to read the uh, super chat here, right? Yeah. Um, so Mr. Stalin always has the, the larger conspiracies every, every time. So <laughs> chicken is uh, taking his trade value without making it too obvious. He is a brilliant strategist and looking for the C on his Jersey. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we know we know Monsieur Solon for his their conspiracy. So. Yeah. yeah, and I think I'm a pessimist at times. I think he wins. But you, you know what? <laughs> if these guys are thinking that far ahead, you'd like to think that Kessel's thinking that far ahead, trying to be an offensive-minded guy getting points on the board so he can get the hell out of here. Maybe Chikrin's doing the exact opposite. Good, good job of spotting that debug egg. 
I put these on because we were going to play one of these things is not like the other. And that's why I put on my glasses. So <laughs> yeah, where's Leah's glasses? Yeah, that's just, yeah. that's the only thing in this image that is not like the other. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> that's it. Oh my gosh. Well, we mentioned that the Coyotes have just one more game before they have their week off, which is kind of good timing for them because they can watch the Super Bowl, have Super Bowl parties, kind of get after it and not worry about having a game the next day. And if they want to, they can bet on the Super Bowl um, using the DraftKings Sportsbook app this week. Um, I cannot believe it's already this Sunday. And this week at the DraftKings Sportsbook app, when you sign up using the promo code PHNX, new customers get 56 to 1 odds on either team. If you bet $5 or more, you get 280 in free bets if your team wins. If you're not a new customer, you can bet on Super Bowl 56 props, which is so fun. There's color of the Gatorade, the coin flip, everything in between. Um, so just a ton of props to bet on. So give it a try at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. That's code PHNX. Bet $5 to get 280 in free bets if your team wins. That's 21 and over. Arizona only gambling problem. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. New customers only. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Clinton asked, can we bet on the puppy ball? I'm not sure. But Karen, I like- what are you saying? What's Karen saying about us? <laughs> you want testosterone in this show? Karen, you're you're the, always the one that lifts us up. I, I, I don't know what to feel right now. I'm surprised. Karen advice. always is there for me. I appreciate you, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was asking for our Super Bowl picks earlier too, by the way. So let's just lay oh, it out there our right picks? now. I mean, we have one more show against the Kings before we have to lay yeah. that out there. But do you guys know? Do you know who you're picking? I'm taking. I the mean, Reds. it's. I, I want to say HK, but I, I wow, Super like Bowl Joe HK. Burrell. Okay. Well, no, it's just the matchup that, like, I, I think the NFL commissioners like HK. Like, is this the matchup everybody wanted across the country? The Rams and the Bengals. Is this? I the, mean, it's the LA know, market. Not That's not I a wanted. bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess. I guess Rams Chiefs maybe, but I guess Joe Burrow's the story. I'd like to see Joe Burrow tear it up. I'd like to see the Bengals win. I just don't know if they can beat LA in LA. And Stafford's just too hot. So I, I think the Rams are going to get the win. I am also picking the Rams. But last time I picked against the Bengals, I lost a bet. And now I'm bleaching my hair blonde on Friday. So That is I true. Have, I have a hard time betting against the Bengals. But I still feel like uh, I, I, the, Bengal, or the, the Rams are going to win. I'm not taking the Rams spread, but I think they can win. Wow. Yeah. Um, I also think the Rams four, are going to four, win. Four. Mm. Which... Just goes to mean I think the Bengals will win because we all just said that. Ah. Um, and also, I will say today, and this doesn't surprise me because Arizona is like this um, at the Waste Management Open today. So many Bengals jerseys, very few Rams jerseys. Wow. So I think I think the people want the Bengals. The Bengals are be... what the Bills would be if the Bills were in the Super Bowl. They're America's team right now. <laughs> Everyone wants to see them succeed and see Los Angeles fail. Well, I always like to beat L.A., so, um, <laughs> you know, we'll see. First-time Super Bowl winner, whoever wins, so that's cool. I like that. Wow. So look at these stats yeah. we come up with here on the hockey show. And Just can we talk full about of stats Did today. you see the, women, the women's curling tonight? The Americans beat the Russians in the opening round robin game? I did not, I see, did that, not see that. I did not see that. Thank you. Seriously, just, it literally just got over it. It was all over it. Thank they, you. They win 9-3. Thank you for Americans. that update, though. And then the uh, Olympic hockey is later. Their debut with their new captain, Andy Mealy. They're playing uh, the team out of China tonight. So, with, or this uh, morning with or tomorrow. Arizona morning. State's Peter Zhang is on that team. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. Arizona connections every which way. Um, That's right. Speaking of Arizona connections and speaking of the Waste Management Open, and we're going to save this, but I did run into Scotty Upshaw and Shane O'Brien today at the Waste Management Open. Um, Scotty Upshaw played here. Um, with the Coyotes and got to chat with them. We talked a little bit about the arena situation, hockey in Arizona. So that video will be coming um, this week to hear what they had to say. So it was kind of cool to catch up with them. Um, Speaking of stats, and this one was kind of funny to me. So before this game, the Coyotes were 3-1-1 and with a two-goal lead. I just thought it was funny that they'd only had five situations this season with a two-goal lead. Now they're four one and one, so that's a little update there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just... don't, I don't know if it's going to happen too many times, Leah. I'm, I'm, no, and also five, a five two final just makes it seem like it was this 
offensive like output but it was two empty net goals yeah it, it wasn't a 5-2 game that's for sure and and yeah. how about those two pipes oh yeah. my god the post could have been the king of the game i thought it was like that taco bell commercial where everybody hears the bell and then everybody just <laughs> leaves i was kind of hoping everybody just leave the ice because they showed that commercial 10 times during the goddamn game the bell rings and everybody just kind of goes away i thought about leaving and when you need a taco you need a taco just saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're off the rails here okay Lord. Veg uh, Veg had those two uh, backdoor saves tonight, though, that were just huge saves in this game. Yeah, the Eberle one, and and uh, I think it was Wenberg on the other one. Um, I, we said it before, Craig, when he's on, he's on. And, and if he can find that consistency in his game here in the NHL, he's still young, and, and when he's good, he's good. I like I mean, the fact that, that – they... oops, sorry. I like the fact no, they went back to him, right? I, I mean, there were a lot of people wondering why the heck they went back to him on a on a back to back. Uh, they didn't think his workload was that bad. First of all, in Vancouver, um, Ivan Prozovtov had just played the day before too in Abbotsford, uh, and, and then he had to travel. So maybe they thought it was too much of a hardship on him. But the, the other thing that that Andre talked about tonight post game was they're still trying to find out what they have in Vemelka. So they're putting him in some of these situations really to test him to see how he responds and. I mean, a lot of people thought this was crazy to put him in this game tonight, and here, here he is. He's our king of the game, I assume. Yes. Uh, yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. He turned in a heck of a game tonight to to help them split this road trip, and I think they're two and zero against the Kraken right now, which is they are um, not necessarily a good I thing in the Tankathon but series, the, but but the Coyotes are undefeated, or yeah, undefeated against. A whole franchise, a whole NHL franchise. So that's kind of fun. You bring um, up something interesting, Craig, about Vimelka, though. At some point here, we're into February. March is around the corner. At some point, are they going to start thinking about what their goaltending is going to look like next season? I mean, you, you've, you've got Vimelka, you've got Wedge, we're going to have to deal with. Where does Carter Hutton fit into this? Does he fit into this? Is Prozvatov still in the American League? <laughs> like at some point, do you, do you reward Vimelka and say, hey, you know what? We'd like to have you stick around. Um, maybe it, it financially better and behooves them to do it now, um, get him signed. I, I don't know. Is it something you think that's on their radar yet? It is. Uh, Bill Armstrong actually told me that it's something they're going to start talks with him soon. I actually reported this uh, in the last neutral zone that I, that I had. They're going to start talks with him soon. So they do want to keep him around. And I, I do think he's one of those two guys on the roster next season. Who the other guy is, I don't know at this point. It's not going to be Carter Hutton. I wrote about him today, and I, I I wouldn't be surprised if this is this is it for Carter Hutton. I can't I can't imagine another team signing him. To be honest, he's 36, and his recent resume isn't all that good. As far as Scott Wedgwood, I, I don't know. He he's actually represented by the same agent as Karel Hamelka, so maybe they can work something out and keep him around for what's going to be another difficult season in Arizona. I don't know that you want to put Ivan Prozvatov in that situation yet. Um, down in the AHL tonight, which unfortunately Tucson lost five nothing to Abbotsford, um, <laughs> but David Tendick uh, made his AHL debut tonight when he came in, I believe, in the second period in reliefs in Tucson. So they I came mean, in in the third, played sixteen minutes, had seven saves on seven shots. There it is. Not give up a goal in the game tonight in his AHL debut for David Tendick. Yep. So not not a great week for the road runners but man tough tough for them lately unfortunately yeah so many so many players called up they just haven't had a a full roster so it's really hard to play in that situation yeah between injuries and call-ups this is not the season this tucson roadrunner team thought they'd have it's the coaching staff thought they were gonna have different players they you were talking we talked about this team being a team that to be reckoned with in this pacific division it just didn't pan out. It's not. It's not anyone's fault, other than they played here. They played at yeah. the big club. You know, it's, yeah. it's a roster. It's a numbers issue. Um, but we talked about development, and I still think we talked about Prozvatov. I still think he needs to play there another year. I think, you know, we talk about the development for some of these young defensemen, even JJ Mosier. It's going to be a guy we have to really look at. Do you want him to play 82 games in the NHL next year, or do you want them to succeed in the American League? I still think it's it's going to be part of what Bill – it's interesting to see how he'll build this team over this summer compared to how he built it last summer. Will it be similar with older expiring contracts? Will he try to interject some of those young players? It'll be interesting to see what his thought process is going forward. Definitely. Well, also going forward for us, it is – 
late right now and we're going to be back in the studio tomorrow morning early but it's for an exciting reason and if you all don't know it is because tomorrow morning zach lind the drummer from the band jimmy eat world will be live in the studio not calling in he will be physically in the studio live with us tomorrow morning that's thursday morning at 9 a.m um we are super excited jimmy eat world is from arizona Arizona sports fans, we have a ton of questions for Zach about being a musician, about Arizona sports fandom, about songs being used inside of sporting event experiences. So tune in for that on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel, and we are very excited about that one. By the way, how would you like to have just that badass photo of yourself out there in the universe for people to look at all the time? I've already photoshopped myself in it. And print it on my desk. <laughs> can I, can I ask you something tonight yeah. before? I don't want to ask it tomorrow and like this go the wrong way. Is a drummer of a band like a goalie on a hockey team? Do you know what I'm saying when I say that? You're going to have to extend this. Like, help you know, me understand. You know how like, it's like a pitcher in baseball. Is he the guy? Is he the guy? And technically, Leah, when you talk musically, he is like he drives the bus from back there. Like whatever the, he sets the tone, the tempo, he sets the theme of the music. Like it's him. The drummer drives the bus. But so also you might, like that might be, you should ask that tomorrow. So he's well, kind of like the Leah Merrill of drives the bus. Exactly. Of World. Okay. Sure. Sure. I'll take it. I'll take it. Some people would say he's like the Sean DePaz, but you know, <laughs> some, some people would say that. I heard I also heard their tour bus is actually in the parking lot of PHNX tonight. Like that's how they do their thing. They get, they get, especially in the early morning thing, they get there ahead of time. So they're already out there sleeping. Yeah, definitely. Like, <laughs> no, maybe. Oh man, no. Is it like a fast times kind of thing? Is there smoke you pouring just, out of that bus? Just rolling out of that. I don't. <laughs> Happens on the bus, stays on the bus. Craig, not my. Not asking about that either. No, it should be fun. We're going to talk about music. We're going to talk about sports. We're going to talk about music in sports. So it's a, a, lot, a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, I can't wait. And Craig had mentioned the story today that um, about Carter Hutton on GoPHNX.com. If you haven't checked that out, be sure to do so. Um, become a member today. You can get a shirt when you sign up. Sean is wearing the ASU shirt. Um, PD is wearing the purple Cody. So check out the PHNX locker members get deals weekly on merchandise. There's sticker packs on there. And also if you're not following PHNX sports on social media, um, tons of content from the waste management open program today, both on the Instagram, PHNX sports, Instagram, and on Twitter as well. So check that out. Lots of great stuff and on TikTok. Um, so some, some Aaron Rodgers content, a lot of, a lot of cool stuff today. Um, I'm also surprised my street racing crew hasn't appeared. That they're very maybe quiet. It's, it's so late that they're just, they already went to bed. Ah, are over. Which I need to also go to bed. Um, anything else from tonight? <laughs> I know it was a win, but it was like. No, it was good. It was good. It was good goaltending. They 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 were able to maintain an offensive push through sixty minutes. It's a good win. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I except, think for the, they, uh, except, except for the except for the tank about series. Yeah. Did you guys Not already a, put up those standings? We did. We, we did, did put up the yeah. standings. And, and I mean they could have they could have solidified a top two spot tonight. But yeah, this yeah. spread goes from six to you know but, you go to, to four. But Craig, we and we were talking about this before you got here. Do you think that Marty St. Louis is going to give the boost that Bruce Boudreaux gave to the Vancouver Canucks when they went on their little run. I think there'll be a little spike here. So Montreal might climb within range of the Coyotes again. And again, we have a long way to go and we have the trade deadline coming up where teams are going to be in sell mode. So there's going to be some Coyotes that are gone. We'll we'll see how it plays out. I mean, I was just saying with Seattle, I mean, they they could add a 10 point lead on the Coyotes. 10 point lead time of the year. That's done. Then you're you're talking about two teams, but they're still right there. And, yeah. And uh, and oh, by the way, Sean, there's Buffalo as well. There's Buffalo. And there never they come. count out those Sabers when it comes to the Tankathon. It could be a four team race. You still <laughs> think it's two? I think Montreal gets a boost. I think Arizona struggles through the trade deadline. And I just don't know that Seattle team just isn't impressing me right now. I, I don't no. know if they're going to get a lot of wins down the stretch either. So it could be three and don't be afraid of Buffalo. So it could be four. Ottawa, I think that they're too far. Ottawa's too good. They're going to get their wins. So is Jersey. 
So maybe four. We'll keep an eye on it. If you're gonna if you're gonna get the news on the tankathon, it's gonna be here. Don't watch Definitely. DNVR. They no, will not. Be that's the tankathon. The tankathon <laughs> at DNVR Avalanche. But let's pull up the punch card. Let's see where we are in the grand scheme. Have we made any progress? Oh yeah, yeah baby. Look it at does that. look. It's looking We're closing yeah. in on fifty. <laughs> yeah, it's looking a little better. It looks a little better. I, I think this was a good idea. Was this Leah? Was this your idea or was this? Craig's? I think it was Craig's idea. It's a good idea because you can kind of get it. I feel like we're getting there. Like we're we're making progress finally. And then we don't yes. play for seven days, so then it's gonna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. that's gonna that's gonna hurt us a little bit. I don't remember. This was my idea. I'm old. I don't. Remember. It, it was your idea, Craig. Just <laughs> it was, accept, Craig. just accept, just yeah. accept the the praise for the idea. Um, all right. Well, the Coyotes. 12th win it's hard to believe um <laughs> honestly yeah on the road to 18 that, that was the over under was 18 i Six think more? they can i think I they think can they do can it do. I, I definitely do i definitely think they can do it what about the kings uh, i don't know we'll see yeah this is uh by the way this is going to be an in interesting game because this is one of the highly rumored locations for jacob chikrin if he does get traded in fact I saw Lisa Dillman from the Athletic wrote a piece very recently. It may have been yesterday. I can't remember, but looking at the possibilities, LA has a lot of interesting prospects that might intrigue the Coyotes. So. Yeah, and they got LA twice before the end of the month, so it's going to be, you, you know, Coyote fans are going to get a look at this team. They and it's a, you know, always been a rival, but I tell you what, this LA Kings in, team is interesting. They still have some of those old familiar faces, you know, Kopitar, Brown, Quick, some names fans are familiar with, but they have so many young players. They've added so much speed and talent um, to this lineup that they're an interesting team. And you're right. Does a Jacob Chikrin help them out on the back end, provide more offense? And they're a team now that I don't know if they thought they'd be on the, the playoff bubble going in, but they're there now. And yeah. we're almost 50 games in, and, and it's still I didn't think playoffs. so. I really didn't think so that yeah, they would be on the precipice, but there they are. Um, and we do have – and this is all credit to Sean because he does a great job. The, the little calendar looking ahead. And oh, yeah. Like, yeah. So there it is. is. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Shout out Sean for the graphics. Um, so Tampa Bay on Friday, then a nice little break for everyone, and then back with LA what Saturday the, hell are we gonna the do? 19th. We have stuff planned. We got to do stuff? Yes. We got yeah. um, a prospect show with Chris Peters. So that will be super interesting. That's happening next week. We have... Another special show that we will disclose at a later time, but it's going to be a ton of fun. So be sure to no more late on. nights though. No, no more. We need dark. we need a little break from these eight o'clock. It's it's <laughs> daylight savings is right around the corner. So I know we almost we'll get made back it. on Pacific. <laughs> Seriously, but be sure to follow along um, PHNX Sports on YouTube and PHNX underscore Coyotes on Twitter because even when the Coyotes are off, we're still bringing you five days a week of Coyotes content so you're not going to get that anywhere else besides phnx so be sure to follow us follow along um just a, a subtle plug for myself i'm three twitter followers away from a thousand so wow <laughs> hit me with that follow at leah merrill um and of course follow at s peters hockey and at craig s morgan and craig is going to the arizona right are you still going craig the arizona board of regents meeting tomorrow where they will be <laughs> yeah. voting be on we'll because when we'll you are play. a coyotes reporter you are also an education reporter and a political reporter that's the well, reality that sounds like the fun because yeah. i know they'll be talking coyotes the whole entire time no they will not <laughs> no no they'll <laughs> oh, be talking about a fun. lot of other things oh that doesn't sound fun <sighs> better you than yeah. me craig Man. And wait, can right. I ask one more question? Yeah. And I know we're trying to wrap it up here. No, you can. Why the go. hell are they playing? Why the hell are they playing seven thirty on Friday? Because like, they what? said, "How can we just make every game as late as possible?" Yeah, this wait, week? <laughs> I just looked at the schedule, thinking, "Oh, it's seven. No, and then they they play Vegas another. They got a Friday at seven thirty. Then they got the Kings at eight midweek. Like, what the hell? What are they does doing? Does it have anything to do with uh, any of the broadcast rights holders? Oh, I'm sure it does. It's probably what's impacting this starting. I'm sure, track, it's so. TV. 
And I'm surprised to see, and I, I, I know we talked about this yesterday briefly, that the broadcast team for Bally Sports Arizona, we knew they didn't go to Vancouver. I, we all thought they were getting on a plane today and flying to Seattle. No, and did, did you not. see when the feed cut out the for like 30 out. seconds? When we had the sound, yeah. yeah. The sound was like it's inside a can. It was awful. Yeah. It was, I yeah, was sure that there was going to be a goal in that time. <laughs> But But, see, it it happens to them. It happened to us tonight. Maybe there's just something in the airwaves. They have it better than I did. (laughs) And somebody did say in the in the chat, PD wants every game at five eight p.m. Absolutely. Oh yeah, sign me up. Sign me up. (laughs) Remember they used to do that back. Craig was around when they used to do that at at America West when they used to have those Sunday Saturday afternoon games. I love afternoon games. Fantastic. And I don't know why they don't do more of that here. Maybe when they move to, you know, get into the Tempe. Tempe, even their short term or long term in Tempe, maybe you get back to some of those afternoon games on Saturday and Sunday. Fans loved them. Like it was really, it was a popular time. I just don't know why that hasn't caught on. In, Can we bring in, back uh, Peter Puck too? It'd be I, awesome. Well, I, I think the afternoon games will be back when they do the um, back to backs with ASU. <laughs> the yeah, ASU gets the prime time seven <laughs> yeah, o'clock. It's right. o'clock it's the only time available. <laughs> It's like a peewee <laughs> tournament. And the Coyotes are playing at 11 today. <laughs> yeah, oh, I like man. it. Yeah, we're, we're all for it. The three of us are all for that. Well, we will have a morning show tomorrow, 9 a.m. Um, here on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Zach Lynn, Jimmy Eat World live in studio. 9 a.m. tomorrow. So tune in for that. And we will be back on Friday night for another post-game show, the last one for a week. But tons of stuff coming your way at gophnx.com and on Twitter at phnx underscore coyotes. So be sure to follow along, leave us a review, rate wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, man, it's almost midnight. So have a good night, everyone. And we will see you bright and early tomorrow.